again. Over and I couldn't see the words. <laughs> there you are. Minus 
say. <laughs> All right. And without further ado, we can start our show. How about now? Welcome again. Welcome to our jazz friends. It's wonderful to, to have them share their special gifts with us. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Yay. It's also a special day because immediately following worship, we will uh, convene a congregational meeting for the purpose of electing a pastor nominating committee. You will, uh, there are I hope the agenda's made it out there and they'll be distributed with the slate, which hopefully you already know. And this evening at 7 o'clock, the um, confirmation uh, is going to kick off for the year, and 6th, 7th, and 8th graders are invited to meet at the fire pit for a bonfire with s'mores made personally by Lee Nadel. Well, they're going to have to cook them. And... And, and thanks, thanks to Ray, we have a pile of those really long skewers, so get ready to use that fire pit a lot. Uh, next week, we will not be holding in-person worship. Our church will not be conducting worship um, ourselves. We're going to join with the rest of uh, the churches in Presbytery that cho choose to join uh, and have an online service. Uh, partly uh, to hold up our connectedness with one another. The Presbytery has been wonderful. The Presbytery is the collection of churches, and we've been communicating throughout this whole COVID thing. And it has been a blessing sharing ideas. Um, and it's also, um, it's been a long break for uh, some music leaders and, uh, and worship leaders. And so um, this is an opportunity for most of the pastors in the Presbytery to have a little bit of a break. Happy anniversary, Al and Mary Carol Dunker. Is it today? It is today. What a wonderful thing to do on your anniversary. Come to a jazz concert. The price is right. <laughs> what, we're charging fees now? <laughs> and we won't be together, so we should also, uh, next week, so we should also say happy birthday to Julie Farver, who I saw here. Someone, didn't I? Oh, they're right in front of me. <laughs> Happy birthday in advance. Oh, let us worship God. We gather together to learn the way of God's real love. We gather to be set on fire by the Spirit for the service of the Lord. We gather in hope, knowing that Christ has overcome evil with good. Praise be to God. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, come to us now. Help us to feel you move among us, blow through us, bring us to life, that we may be the life of Christ in the world. Amen. Friends, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, but not God. If we confess the sin that God already knows, we will be forgiven because ours is a merciful God, always waiting to bring us home. Let us pray. God of mercy, we confess that we set our minds on human things. Doubting your love, we grab for more than we need. Doubting your wisdom, grace, <laughs> Sorry. Doubting, doubting your wisdom, grace, and power, we shrink from following your way. Forgive us that we may gain new life in you, for it is in Jesus' forgiving name that we pray.
Jesus took up the cross for our salvation. In return for our broken down life, he promises a new life of grace. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. Amen. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord, open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord, open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you, to see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory Pour out your power and love And we sing holy, holy, holy Open the eyes of my heart, Lord Open the eyes of my heart I want to see you I want to see you I should have thanked the House of Blessing for loaning us this stage and for Matt, Matt Thuma, Lee Nadel, Dave Carlisle, and John Morehouse for moving it yesterday. It was a little more trouble than it sounds. <laughs> Hopefully. I could not have written a more, a more beautiful prayer for illumination. Thank you, Jody and the band. The scripture reading today, there's two of them. First is from... Genesis chapter 11, verses 1 through 9. 
you'll probably recognize the story. All people on earth had one language in the same words. When they traveled east, they found a valley in the land of Shinar and settled there. They said to each other, come, let us make bricks and bake them hard. They used bricks for stones and asphalt for mortar. They said, come, let's build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the sky. And let's make a name for ourselves so that we won't be dispersed over all the earth. Then the Lord came to see the city and the tower that the humans built. And the Lord said, there's now one people and they all have one language. This is what they have begun to do. And now all that they plan to do will be possible for them. Come. Let's go down and mix up their language so they won't understand each other's language. Then the Lord dispersed them from there over all the earth and they stopped building the city. Therefore, its name is Babel because the Lord mixed up the language of all the earth and from there the Lord dispersed them over all the earth. The second reading is from the letter to the Romans, chapter 12, verses 9 through 21. Love should be shown without pretending. Hate evil and hold on to what is good. Love each other like the members of your family. Be the best at showing honor to each other. Don't hesitate to be enthusiastic. Be on fire in the spirit as you serve the Lord. Be happy in your hope. Stand your ground when you're in trouble and devote yourselves to prayer. Contribute to the needs of God's people and welcome strangers into your home. Bless people who, har who harass you. Bless and don't curse them. Be happy with those who are happy. Cry with those who are crying. Consider everyone is equal and don't think that you're better than anyone else. Instead, associate with people who have no status. Don't think that you're so smart. Don't pay back anyone for their evil actions with evil actions, but show respect for what everyone else believes is good. If possible, to the best of your ability, live at peace with all people. Don't try to get revenge for yourselves, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. It is written, revenge belongs to me. I will pay it back, says the Lord. Instead, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. By doing this, you will pile burning coals of fire upon his head. Don't be defeated by evil, but defeat evil with good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The story of the Tower of Babel always reminds me of Yertle the Turtle by that great moralist, Dr. Seuss. Your, uh, I'm going to lose these here. I don't know if you can see him, but if you may know the story, it'll bring back memories. Yertle sat on his stone as king on the pond. Anybody know the story? Until one day he decided, when he was on the, he was on the stone over the pond and ruled over everything he could see. One day he decided he could not see far enough to raise his throne, his underling turtles stacked themselves one on top of another under Yertle to get him higher. But of course, the king just kept wanting to get higher and higher. Can you see this at all? Okay. Higher and higher, and he did. Until one day... 
the turtle at the very bottom burped. And it all, the throne and yurtle went plunk into the pond. This week, the groups that are reading Holy Envy together enjoyed a chapter by Barbara Brown Taylor, her take on the Tower of Babel story. I borrowed much from her interpretation here. She shares two Midrashim, which are Jewish interpretations of scripture dating back, some of them at least to the second century. The two she shared to suggest that it is not the goal that God took exception with, but the priorities. Brown summarizes these two stories, the Midrash. In one old story, the Tower of Babel grew and grew until it took a full year for the people to pass the bricks from hand to hand all the way up to the top. Bricks became so precious to the people and to the project that a brick, if, when a brick slipped and fell, the people wept. But when a human being fell and died, no one paid any attention. Another midrash says that the building the tower the, that building the tower became more important than anything else, including giving birth. And when a pregnant woman felt her labor pains begin, she was not allowed to stop making bricks. Instead, she brought forth, while she was making the bricks, put the child in an apron and continued making bricks. I wonder if Dr. Seuss read Midrash. We don't really know for sure what offended God about the tower building, but with the rabbis, we can wonder. What is so bad about working together toward a lofty goal? Is it the goal itself? Does God not want us to accomplish great things together? A tower is a costly construction and the labor produces nothing that will feed or clothe or nurture. Of course, when the earthly structures were, of course, when the earthly structures we are building impressive as they are, become more important than the people they are built to serve, or when the structures serve only some people, God is certain to get miffed. Or is it that these arrogant people want to make a name for themselves? Uh-oh, we're all in trouble. The people tried to build themselves a ladder to the sky. The tower is a symbol of fortress, a symbol that keeps some in and some out. There's only so much room in a tower, right? Some can come inside where it's safe and the rest can't. Is it that they didn't want to leave their little enclave and mingle with the people not belonging to the tower? Everyone who is anyone is already in the group, enjoying our chit-chat, already in the tower. All this and more, I think, are faithful readings of the te text, but it is also and perhaps mostly about conversation. One city became so afraid of being scattered over the face of the earth, of having conversations to share life, with other peoples that they built a tower to guard themselves from the other. They were cut off from the world, unable to bless the world or to be blessed by it. Maybe safer, but staying in our silos has its problems too, right? In a tower, those at the top cannot hear the voices of those at the bottom. Those at the bottom can't hear the voices of those at the top. And there's a whole lot of unheard babbling and brilliance in between. Diverse ideas and communal discernment 
that would be heard on the city streets can't be heard way up there at the top. Diverse ideas only travel up slowly, being distorted along the way. The city that built the tower can feel secure in its fortress, but their comfort is grounded in a false sense of unity. Don't we know that even when we all speak the same language, we often cannot hear one another? Even when we use the same words, the meanings often are as varied as our fingerprints. A tower is exactly the opposite of how God created us to be together. In the story of the Tower of Babel, the people closed themselves off from the needs of the world. They overreached to the sky, separated so much from hu the humanity below. God's confusing of the languages of the people may have seemed a punishment to those in the tower, but what was a blessing to humanity. When the tower was abandoned, the people could once again listen to each other. In their scattering, the people had the opportunity to hear other voices, even if they had to struggle to learn new languages. It was, I'm sure, it is still confusing and chaotic. It's difficult and messy work, but God declares it worthwhile. The people scattered in the Genesis story were not without hope, and neither are we, because ours is a God who brings order and beauty out of chaos. Conversations across difference are never easy, but they are worth having. Jonathan Sachs says the greatest single antidote to violence is conversation. And we are so in need of that anecdote, anec <laughs> antidote. And can you imagine a better place to start than with faithful people in relationship? Here among the church family, we can practice issues affecting those we love and others in the world. We don't have to agree. And God can work through our conversations even when we're wrong. These conversations can inspire and bring hope and creativity, calling in new, the new things that God intends. It's more risky to live outside the tower of seeming sameness, willing to be scattered, to be scattered among the other. At times, it's confusing and we make, make mistakes. We misunderstand each other. But if we do it right, we will learn from each other and change to accommodate the spirit that is moving among us. May God open our ears and our hearts and only then our mouths and bless all our conversations within and beyond the church. Amen. Okay. Let us pray. Lord God, thank you for all the ways you speak to us through your word, which is new each time we lean into it, through music, which stir stirs our spirits, through the friendship in this community and the kindness beyond. Thank you for giving us such rich diversity and for giving us the language and the command to befriend neighbor and stranger. We pray now for your world, which struggles mightily to be as your kingdom. We pray for the victims of natural disasters in so many parts of this country and the world. We pray for the people in the path of hurricanes and fires and all the destruction they bring. Help us to help them rebuild. We pray for peace in this nation. Break down the walls that divide us. Teach us to lean in to really hear each other. Give us words to show honor to those with whom we disagree. Overcome the hatred in our hearts that Christ's peace may overflow into our streets. Encourage us to stand our ground even as we welcome the thoughts of others with humil the humility befitting those who stand in grace. 
Bless this congregation, Lord, that she may always be ready to defeat evil with good. And now as you listen to the Lord's Prayer, let it be said in your hearts. that God is with you. May you be filled with the Holy Spirit. May you trust in the grace of Christ until we meet again. Amen. You've got a friend in me You've got a friend in me When the road looks rough ahead And you're miles and miles from your nice warm bed You just remember what the good Lord said you got a friend in me Yeah, you got a friend in me
You got a friend in me. You got a friend in me. You've got troubles. I've got them too. There isn't anything I wouldn't do for you. We'll stick together and we'll see it through. Cause you got a friend in me. Yeah, you got a friend in me. Some other folks might be a little bit smarter than me, bigger and stronger too. But none of them will ever love you the way I do. It's me and you. And as the years go by, our friendship will never die. You're gonna see it's our destiny. Yeah. You got a friend in me. Yeah, you got a friend in me. Whoa, oh, you got a friend in me.
Thank you, everybody. Jim Seidel on bass. Yeah. Yeah. Frank Kerouac, saxes. Yeah. Paul Fields on the drum set. Yeah. And Jody Fields, our vocalist. Yeah. And you. Oh, and me. <laughs> um, as always, thank you so much for allowing us to come here and present this music. It's inspirational to us, and hope, we hope it is to you. Um, it's surprising to us what we can find in these melodies. Um, who know that we could put Take Five and Amazing Grace together like that. So we hope um, you feel inspiration as we do presenting this music to you. Thank you. And a special thanks to the Lord for bringing this weather. Yes. Yeah.